I bet you guys are tired of aimlessly searching for the perfect free-to-play MMORPG, right? Trust me, I know. I've tried helping out by doing repeated top 10 videos, one per month over the course of the entire year, featuring 10 unique individual MMOs that were not included in any other list. Yet even so, I continue to get comments asking me for my recommendation on what is a good free-to-play MMO. And since it's near the end of the year, I figured, you know what? What better time is there than right now to go ahead and do a more condensed, probably larger top 10 video of the best free to play MMOs to play right now in 2020 going into 2021. This will be the last free to play top 10 video done this year until next year. However, instead of traditionally doing the 10 best MMOs, I'm going to take this a step further and break it down into niche specific MMOs. Tab target, action, open world, hub based anime. Yeah, you guys are going to witness what is perhaps the most common comprehensive list of free-to-play MMORPGs currently available. Before that though, did you guys know that we actually stream every single week over on Twitch? If you're interested in seeing any of these games stream, then come on over and join us. We stream every Tuesday, every Saturday, and every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Seriously, we would love to have you guys come on over and play with us. But let's go ahead and start this off talking about tab target MMOs. I know these games are still the most actively played MMOs on the entire market right now, with WoW and Final Fantasy 14 being the most actively played currently. After its recent release onto Steam, Star Wars The Old Republic has had an influx of new player attention, topping tens of thousands of concurrent active players at every moment of the day, something this game really hasn't seen in years. The Old Republic utilizes a somewhat dated feeling style of tab target combat, not as bad as some granted but evidently worse than others, but then I personally always felt the combat to be a little rough around the edges even when trying it out for the first time four years ago. Graphically, it does a pretty good job of capturing the look and feel of the Star Wars world and and brings with it a lot of personality and emotion via the very expansive story, perhaps one of the deepest, most emotional stories I've played through with the exception of Shadowbringers. This is a very large open game with a lot of unique worlds to explore, each with their own unique aesthetic look and feel. Mabinogi is a bit of an older title, but let's be real here, there are no other titles like this. Period Chronicles was supposed to be the spiritual successor to the franchise, but after Nexon canceled that, yeah. Mabinogi is an anime-inspired MMO set in a large sandbox world. Where most games in the genre require you follow a specific route, they're linear in the sense of progression, Mabinogi is much more freeing. You can level at your own pace, rebirth back down to level one, age up your character, get various jobs in game to make a living. Honestly, from what I've seen, this game provides almost limitless options to progress at your own pace, in your own way. The one downside I have found to Mabinogi is its combat, which is mostly rock, paper, scissors. Use a certain attack that counters another attack, which counters another attack, rinse and repeat. And the combat itself is actually admittedly kind of slow, which does turn off some players. RuneScape and Old School RuneScape together make up one of the most densely populated, expansive MMOs to have ever graced a free-to-play market. Don't let RuneScape's graphical style dissuade you from playing the Titan, though. I know that it can be a little to get over, as a lot of people do go ahead and judge a game these days by how good or bad it happens to look visually. RuneScape features a ridiculously large world to go out and explore, tons of dungeons and instance content, and speaking of content, is updated with new content more frequently than most MMOs currently available. Its tab target combat is a little on the slower side, but is in no way inhibited by its engine or time of release. Plus, this game, while built for PCs, was recently ported to mobile devices as well, providing players additional avenues with which to play the game. Yeah, an actual non-pay-to-win cross-platform MMO. Secret World Legends is one of the highest quality MMOs that I have ever played. I've put in 50, maybe 60 hours into this game over the years and had nothing but enjoyment and fond memories of it. However, the publisher behind it ruined it and as such, the player base continued to dwindle over time. While The Old Republic has tens of thousands of active players and RuneScape has hundreds of thousands of active players, Secret World Legends maybe has a few thousand active players at best. Yet at the same time, this game had some of the best voice acting in an MMO, some of the best storytelling, some of the most difficult puzzles to solve, an interesting setting, a post-apocalyptic world with aliens, with monsters. The tab target combat was probably the weakest part of the game for me though, as it was a little bit clunky, but not enough to where I ever felt that it was an issue. This could have been one of the greatest MMOs. Instead, uh, yeah. 
This is a game that ate up two years of my life back in 2009. I could not distance myself from it and spent several thousand dollars purchasing things from their cash shop. Granted, the game has changed quite drastically over time, as all MMOs do. Perfect World has nevertheless remained one of the largest sandbox MMOs with almost endless content to partake of. This game has dungeons, it has raids, it has entire instanced worlds like heaven and hell, a world larger than almost anything I have ever seen, the ability to freely traverse said world without limitation, and most importantly, their character creator. The character creator was what actually put Perfect World on most players' radar. This provided players the ability to create avatars unlike anything they'd ever seen before. The tab target combat is also fairly good although it definitely feels a little stiffer and yes guys i did say stiffer don't think too deeply on that than some of the newer titles but this is an mmo that everyone needs to try although it is very heavily pay to win if you have any intention of playing competitively Ion was one of the few MMOs that I played competitively, back after it launched as a free-to-play MMO at least. While it found some success with a paid business model, it didn't really soar to new heights until it went free-to-play. This is a tab target MMO that still, to date, remains one of the best PvP titles on the market. It has what is arguably one of the better tab target combat systems, providing plenty of chain combo options, and used to have a variety of very large, very open zones for players to explore in PvP in. While the game and its zones have changed quite drastically over time, it's still an MMO that I find myself going back to to relive some of the things that I enjoyed about the game. Aerial PvP, fast, impactful combat, a great character creator, and I met a good friend of mine there, Capri, who was actually the very first person to ever recognize me and talk to me out of the game, and who remains to date one of the few people online that I would genuinely actually call a friend. The reason I'm including Atlantica online here is because there's nowhere that it really fits otherwise. This is one of the handful of unique MMOs that are currently available and honestly deserves a mention in every top video list purely because you have to try this out before it disappears for good. If you're a fan of turn-based JRPGs like the older Final Fantasy games, then this will feel like home to you as you go about the world recruiting characters to join you, gearing yourself and your group for exploration, for raiding and for PvP. While the game definitely utilizes the segregated worlds, there is plenty to do in Atlantica, just not many people to really do it with. Next, we're gonna go ahead and jump into action MMOs. There are several action MMOs that are really popular currently, the Elder Scrolls Online and Black Desert Online as examples, but they're both buy to play games, and right now we're touching on the free ones. I feel like everyone has played Guild Wars 2, but for those of you that haven't, you definitely need to. I know the premium expansion packs might be a turnoff for you, but the entire game, with the exception of the expansion content, is fully playable and accessible without paying a cent. And this is a game that has a quality far beyond the majority of free-to-play titles. Some people are of the opinion that Guild Wars 2 is a tab target combat system, while others believe that it's actually an action MMO. Me? Playing Guardian while Mrs. Dix plays Necro, it feels like a pure action MMO to us, or at worst, a slight hybrid between the two. It has enormous segregated zones, with each zone being level locked, meaning that you're actually synced down to a maximum level whenever entering a zone to prevent power creeping. And it has one of the best stories in an MMO, and the fashion wars that take place. Man, there is a reason everyone suggests this whenever someone asks for an MMO recommendation. Terra is in a weird limbo right now with Enmash shutting down and a new publisher up in the air. Nevertheless, it's been confirmed to be migrating to a new home and as such won't be going anywhere. This is THE MMO that Mrs. Sticks and I met in and will forever hold a special place in our hearts. Even if it's changed from a game that required a lot of challenge to something that is doable solo now. Which, you know, is, is fine. Most MMOs these days are like that anyway. Terra itself is a beautiful action MMO that has some of the best action combat and this is, in my opinion, my you, not other people's, in a free MMO. It allows for some devastating comboing of abilities, and abilities look flashy and are very impactful. The world, much like Guild Wars 2, is segregated. You go through small portals to travel between regions, but otherwise they are largely connected and filled with content to consume. The only free-to-play MMO that has combat that is as good as Terra is Blade & Soul. The two of these games have better action combat than any other free MMO. Blade & Souls is very different to Terra's, where Terra utilizes very fast, very specific combos. Blade & Soul instead leaves you with significantly less abilities, but a higher skill cap 
as timing and ping are crucial to competitive play. Outside of its action combat though, Blade and Soul is a beautiful game that, while yes, it also features segregated zones, has large open areas to freely explore at your leisure. However, the world, unlike games like Guild Wars 2 or Final Fantasy XIV, feels a little bit emptier, much like the majority of games here. And this game is a grind, more so than anything I've played in years. I have a Hong Moon level 22 Zen Archer, but holy crap, if it isn't a struggle staying up to date with gear and levels, which is probably the main issue that I actually have with Blade and Soul, really. Neverwinter is an MMO that I have a love and hate relationship with. On the one hand, this game is beautiful. It has a ton of lore, an incredible amount of story to sift through, lots of voice acting, a very high quality feel. This is an MMO that I think actually transcends the free MMO template, but at the same time, I don't think that it would ever cut it as a paid title. The game utilizes segregated zones with tons of areas being disconnected from one another via loading screens, but it never really feels like you're instanced off from the rest of the world. The environments, the areas you have to explore, everything looks fantastic. The combat is equally as entertaining to utilize, especially on certain mage classes, classes that I grew quite fond of while playing. There's always plenty to do, and the game is updated quite regularly as well, making for a solid home if this is your type of game. I never invested nearly as much time into Albion Online as I perhaps should have. This is one of the few player-driven sandbox MMOs in existence and considering the game as a population that is growing, actually growing month to month, I feel as though the conversation from a paid game to a free MMO was just what the title needed. I wasn't entirely certain what to classify the combat in Albion as. It's not 100% action combat, but at the same time, it isn't really a tab target MMO either. It's like somewhere in between requiring targets, but not really. It's in an unusual place, honestly. Regardless, the combat is probably one of the aspects of the game that is less of a focus with the world, the politics within the world, the crafting, the PVP, and pretty much everything else being of such importance, something that I never expected to find within an MMO. This is a game that you can actually get lost in doing whatever you want, really. Yeah, there's direction, there's a story, there's the option to go out and kill things like normal, but at the same time, it's just not really necessary and that's part of what makes the game special and unique to so many people. Amazon Game Studios recently confirmed, well, strongly hinted at the announcement that Lost Ark was heading to the West in 2021. Finally, after all these years, the game is coming to our shores. After releasing in South Korea, within Russia and Japan, we're finally going to get our fingers on the game. And let me tell you, I've put in over a hundred hours so far with Mrs. Sticks on stream, and this is a very fun, very entertaining game, absolutely packed with story. Everything you do, every place you go, everything is furthered by the story. Every character you meet has some importance to the story. It was crazy seeing this in a South Korean MMO. While the world itself is segregated, split between loading portals, the world is so large and expansive both on land and when sailing the ocean, and the combat is fast, fluid, and impactful, this is one of the better looking action MMOs out there, honestly, and I couldn't recommend it enough when it launches next year. Then we have the hub-based MMOs, which are, you know, technically MMOs, but on a, a much smaller scale. Dungeon Fighter Online is the most popular MMO in the entire world. No joke. It has several million players playing from China alone. And yes, that is concurrently. It has more active players playing right now, right this very second, than World of Warcraft has over the course of an entire month, which is insane. But then China has a population of like, what? Uh, one and a half billion, so it stands to reason. Nevertheless, Dungeon Fighter Online is one of my favorite hub-based MMOs. It utilizes some of the best combat in a side-scrolling brawler and has a very deep class system providing players countless opportunities to truly craft a character that they want. For this section, I won't be talking about the world as there is no real point. How based MMOs don't have a world outside of their instanced environments, their dungeons, their towns, but that's okay because they more than make up for it in variety. The combat specifically is action based, providing fast, very responsive combat that honestly has not been done. Whenever I talk about Vindictus, I always have a plethora of people jump in talking about how good the game's combat is. And there is a reason for that. Vindictus has incredible action combat, but the game overall is definitely held back by its instanced world. This is a beautiful MMO. It has amazing looking character models and some really great environments to explore. The combat is incredibly fast, but doesn't require the heavy use of button mashing like Black Desert. You have abilities much in the same way as BDO, but otherwise it functions much more like your traditional MMO. 
While the combat is good though, you also possess the ability to interact with your environment, picking up enemies, picking up objects, heck, you can probably pick up other players and utilize them as weapons as well. Seeing that just isn't really done in other games, and that is part of what makes the combat so good. There's a lot of story to be found in the game as well, which is always a plus. And then finally, we have the anime MMOs. I know you guys are going to be very highly anticipating this area, because I know that a lot of you guys are highly anticipating the Blue Protocol MMO. RPG that's coming out next year. Ragnarok Online is, well, it used to be the king of the anime MMO genre, but has fallen from grace over time, which is bound to happen. Even World of Warcraft has almost fallen to the number two most populated spot, right? It's all inevitable. This was a game that ate up a lot of time though, and still does even with all of their streamlining and optimizations. This game is a heavy grind that requires more time investment than I have anymore. There are more classes than I've ever come across in any other game in the history of my gaming career, and the world itself is filled with things to do, areas to explore. However, as noted earlier, this is a very heavy grind, so if that isn't your thing, this definitely won't appeal to you. Soul Worker has for a very long time now been one of my favorite anime MMOs. Granted, Gameforge doesn't update it nearly as often as they should, but at the same time, I haven't found, currently at least, a better anime MMO with more engaging, rewarding combat. This is one of the animeist looking titles in this entire list, with the exception of maybe PSO2. While there isn't much in the way of overall customization or fashion in this game, the game does excel where it needs to, and that is in the area of combat. Combat in Soul Worker, well granted, yes, you do have a few limited slots, allows you to to set up different combo selections for each ability, being able to push out a barrage of different skills in rapid succession. The game also has quite a bit of story, with certain villains lasting quite a ways through the game and specific NPCs being integral to the progression of the story. I would have included this in the hub-based MMO section, but I just felt that it was more appropriate to keep it listed under the anime MMO section. I know New Genesis is actually launching next year, but right now, Fantasy Star Online 2 is one of, if not the biggest anime MMO on the market. While games like Soul Worker and Dungeon Fighter both have a variety of different quest hubs, PSO2 takes place in one specific hub, the Space Station. And that is more than fine, there's a lot there and even more to do outside of the hub. Unlike other hub-based MMOs that have party sizes of a mere handful, PSO2 actually has ridiculously large populated battles that have so many players taking part that it's almost impossible to keep track of and are arguably some of the most fun I have had in the entire game. There's also the potential to meet other players as an invader instant, something else that I don't traditionally see within hub-based MMOs. And then there's the combat, which is probably the best action combat in an anime MMO outside of Soul Worker. The shifting between weapons, filling various different roles, really leaves a lot of room to customize your playstyle. And don't even get me started on character creation. This game is a beast. This is the last game that we'll talk about today, because I feel like I've already taken up so much of your guys' time as is. Tree of Savior is essentially Ragnarok Online, but a more updated version of it known as a spiritual successor to the popular MMO. And this definitely worth checking out if Ragnarok Online looks too old for you. This game is an isometric MMO like Lost Ark and Albion Online and features some incredibly detailed looking abilities, but at the same time, really doesn't have much of a population left due to the mistakes made early on in the game's life. As is the case with with all isometric MMOs, this game utilizes segregated zones, but they're packed with monsters and things to do. Honestly, this could be an amazing game if people gave it the chance after its initial failure anyway. And that's it. That is, uh, that is, well, you know what? I don't know how many games really that was too many. Probably, but I mean, if you can't find a game to play out of all of these, then the MMO scene might just not really be it for you. Anyway, guys, that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you all next time. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it. Yeah, all hard work's gonna be worth it. Ooh. Hey